Hello. With Exelon, let's simulate uh, the use of non-invasive ventilation with pressure support. Here we have a COPD patient, uh, which is in the hospital for a surgical procedure, for example. And we will simulate an exacerbation of his disease. So the patient has an increased airway resistance, but for some problem, he develops a severe bronchospasm. So let's induce an increment in his airway resistance. Please look at the tidal volume. It is now around 350 ml, uh, 350-100 ml, uh, 6 ml per kilo, with a respiratory rate of 25, and we will increase the airway resistance to 18 centimeters of water per liter per second. We confirm this alteration and look at the tidal volume. Now it's reduced and most important, the arterial blood gases show uh, retention of CO2 with uh, acute respiratory acidosis. So in this situation, the patient now uh, is in a much uh, worse condition and because of the arterial blood gases, he now meets criteria for non-invasive ventilation utilization. So let's give to this patient non-invasive ventilation with CPAP and pressure support. So let's first give him only CPAP, so no pressure support, only a little PEEP of 5. He has still an FIO2 of 28%, which is very low, inadequate for a COPD patient, and we confirm, and what we see first is the airway pressure is now positive, but no improvement on the arterial blood gases so far. Well, it is now that we can improve it by giving him some more pressure support. I give here 10 centimeters of water of pressure support, and let's see what happened course now the ventilator gives him pressure support look at the tidal volume i just freeze the system here's the tidal volume much more around 500 ml 8 ml per kilogram and because of that the tidal the minute ventilation increases and of course the co2 will fall down and the ph will rise back to normal. So that's the acute effect of non-invasive ventilation. Here you can see even a little bit of respiratory alkalosis. Because of this effect, the, much, uh, the great effort that this patient is doing is not necessary anymore. So he will decrease the respiratory rate, for example, to 20 breaths per minute, and he will also decrease his muscle effort. It will decrease the PMUS to something around 12 centimeters of water. So he, was, he will spend less energy to maintain his ventilation. And we see here, look at the, the curves, the PMUS is now reduced and the patient can still have a good tidal volume to maintain his minute ventilation and to maintain uh, approximately normal pH and pCO2 just because he is now on non-invasive ventilation. As we can see here, all parameters are green except for the PF ratio, which is reduced because of some shunt effect on the, on the pulmonary parenchyma. But non-invasive ventilation improved his uh, blood gases, improved especially the muscle effort is now in the approximately in the physiologic limits. So the patient is now not in risk of muscle fatigue. So that's the demonstration of the effects of non-invasive ventilation in uh, during uh, exacerbation of COPD.